All right, I believe we've got uh, Sergeant Arms if we can get the second carry. All right, I guess we've got 13 senators. Is it 13 or 14? 14. We have 14 senators. It is now 2.45 p.m. We, we will come out of recess and call our session back into order. to obtain a three point a three million unsecured line of credit from First Interstate Bank to provide funds for tribal land purchases and other economic development projects. So we had amended the agenda for that to be on the floor at this time. I believe uh, the chairman of the revenue committee Hold in sick today, but we do have the Secretary of the Revenue Committee present, which is Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. So at this time, the bill was introduced by the Executive Branch, so at this time, the floor recognizes the Executive Branch and who will be introducing the bill. All right, the chairman indicates the executive legal bill what? Organizes bill what? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Secretary, Vice Chairman, members of the body, Chairman uh, of the Executive Branch, and our guests. Uh, we have a joint action resolution of the Co Tribal Legislature and the Co Tribal Executive Branch entitled, quote, Resolution Authorizing the Chairman of the Executive Branch to obtain a $3.0 million unsecured line of credit from First Interstate Bank to provide funds for tribal operations, land purchases, and other economic development projects. Motion to adopt. A motion to adopt by Senator Stewart, second by Senator. Thanks. Go to proceed. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the resolution reads as follows. <clears throat> Whereas the Crow Tribe is committed to securing its land base and supporting economic development within the Crow Reservation, and whereas immediate opportunities exist for the purchase of agricultural land and businesses within the reservation and to begin development of renewable energy projects, 
And whereas, in order to provide immediate funding for the foregoing land purchase and economic development opportunities, and to provide additional operating funds for the tribal government, the executive branch has made arrangements with First Interstate Bank for a $3.0 million unsecured line of credit to be drawn down and fully repaid within 120 days from the date of issuance of the line of credit. And where it is, as it is anticipated, that the line of credit will be repaid from other longer term financing obtained by the tribe before the due date for repayment. And whereas the chairman of the executive branch has authority and responsibility pursuant to the enumerated powers in Article 4, Section 3 of the Constitution and Bylaws of the Crow Tribe of Indians to represent the Crow Tribe in negotiations with federal, state, and local governments and other agencies, corporations, associations, or individuals in matters of welfare affecting the Crow Tribe. Uh, to, quote, negotiate and approve or prevent any sale, disposition, lease, or encumbrance of tribal lands, interest in lands, or other tribal assets, including buffalo, minerals, gas, and oil, with final approval granted by the legislative branch. And to, quote, negotiate and approve limited waivers of sovereign immunity when such a waiver is necessary for business purposes in accordance with Article 5, Section 2F of the Constitution, unquote. And whereas the legislative branch has authority and responsibility pursuant to its powers and duties in Article 5, Section 2D of the Constitution, quote, to grant final approval or disapproval of items negotiated by the executive branch pertinent to the sale, disposition, lease, or encumbrance of tribal land, interests in lands, or mineral assets, and in Article 5, Section 2F, to grant final approval or disapproval of limited waivers of sovereign immunity by the executive branch when waivers are necessary for business purposes. And whereas the chairman of the executive branch has negotiated the terms of the line of credit with First Interstate Bank and understands that the bank is prepared to approve the line of credit according to the terms set forth in the attached promissory note, including a limited waiver of sovereign immunity as set forth in Appendix A to the promissory note, and whereas the line of credit is in the best interest of the Crow tribe and the limited waiver of sovereign immunity is necessary for the business purpose of obtaining the line of credit. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Crow Tribal Legislature and the Crow Tribal Executive Branch. Section 1. That the Chairman of the Executive Branch of the Crow Tribe is hereby authorized to execute the promissory note attached hereto and incorporated herein in order to obtain a line of credit from First Interstate Bank in the amount of $3 million, all in accordance with the terms and conditions in the promissory note. Section 2, that the limited waiver of sovereign immunity is substantially form set forth as Appendix A to the promissory note attached here and incorporated by reference is hereby approved. Section 3, that the Chairman of the Executive Branch is hereby authorized to execute such additional documents and agreements and take such further actions on behalf of the Crow Tribe of Indians that are necessary to complete and to administer the loan transaction authorized in Section 1 and two above. Section four, that the funds from the line of credit authorized by this resolution, after payment of transaction costs for the loan, shall be used only as follows. A, the amount of $1,500,000 shall be authorized for the purpose of land acquisition for and on behalf of the Crow Tribe and, and directly associated costs. Accordingly, the FY 2013 tribal budget shall be amended as follows. The budget account department entitled tribal... Uh, Mr. Watt, Mr. Watt, why am I interject right now? What's in our packets does not have that amended version right there. Oh, I'm sorry. So what's going to have to happen is that you're going to have to read the old, the original version, and then when we come back to amendments, then you can put the amendments in there, the substitute. So on section 4A, or section 4, <coughs> section 4 should just, uh, shouldn't be any other sections in there. No A or anything like that, section. Yeah, that's what I was going Speaker, I apologize, I was reading from a proposed substitute, but the original bill, section four, reads as follows. 
that the funds from the line of credit authorized by this resolution after payment of transaction costs for the loan shall be used only for authorized tribal government expenditures pursuant to the FY 2013 tribal budget approved by the legislature, as such budget may be amended from time to time. And section 5, that the approval granted herein is effective is effective on the date of approval of this resolution. All right, thank you. Now that brings us to the 30-minute presentation. Speaker, if I may, I'll give you a very quick summary of the terms of the note and hand it over to uh, Chairman Okayo. Um, as indicated in the JAR, this is a $3 million loan. It's an interest rate of prime plus 2%, which is 5.25% right now. Um, the whole loan will be payable in 120 days or four months from the date that it's issued. Um, <clears throat> those are uh, ver very simply the loan terms. It is not secured by any assets of the tribe, so we haven't pledged 107th interest or any other assets uh, for this loan. Uh, in terms of the limited waiver of sovereign immunity, it's uh, the same as uh, we've included in two other prior uh, First Interstate Bank loans. It uh, provides for uh, arbitration of any disputes. You enter the judgment in tribal court. If tribal court doesn't act, then a, a person could uh, request a judgment be entered by the federal or state court. Um, it's limited to amounts expressly due under the note, which would be the note amount itself, attorney's fees if there is a dispute to the prevailing party, and arbitration costs, but it uh, does not waive the tribe's sovereign immunity for any indirect, consequential, tort, punitive, or non-compensatory damages, and does not allow any encumbrance of tribal trust assets. Um, that, I believe, is um, uh, a summary of all the, the terms, and it's, as you see, a very uh, simple set of documents, just a promissory note with the appendix attached with the limited waiver on it as we've used before. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah. The one issue that, uh, or a question that we discussed in committee is whether, um, well, is amending section four to uh, include a more specific budget authorization and in terms of land purchase, whether that would also include improvement and repair costs. So with, with that, um, I'll um, turn it over to Chairman Olkayo. Floor recognizes Chairman and Executive Branch, Chairman Darren Olkayo. handouts that I had, uh, Jackie and Sherry hand out to all the senators, it should look like this. Do all the senators have a copy of the drawdown schedule? On the year, there's a mistake. It should be reading October 12th, November 12th, December 12th. That's indicating the year. Then on from December, from January on, it should be 13th. So when they printed this out, it was uh, a typo. So that should be, so that should be October of 2011, November 2011, December 2011, and then January 2013 on down to September 2013, with a total of nine million fifty-three thousand dollars and eight hundred or fifty-three thousand eight hundred sixty-six dollars. Go ahead and proceed, Mr. Chairman. Oh, uh, this uh, three million dollar loan uh, we and this. In discussions with the uh, legislature um, last month, when, uh, prior to the purchase of the Hairpin Ranch, there was a 1.5. Um, we allowed ourselves a 1.5 ceiling to purchase the to ranch, uh, 1,900 acres, and and then I have uh, an operational plan for the Hairpin Ranch, and this this is a it's a working document, so all of you will will be part of this operational plan. But this is uh, something we wanted um, to start uh, the process. 
because uh, a lot of people, even uh, like the Gazette and many uh, media folks, want to know what's the crow trying to do with this hairpin ranch. And a lot of people are assuming what's going to happen with the hairpin ranch, but with this operational plan, we'll, we'll make copies available for, for the branch. Um, but it is uh, 1,900 acres, and the reason why we wanted to go after this uh, piece of land is, uh, is adjacent to uh, the reservation boundary on the eastern side. And um, if you all recall, um, there's been a lot of people talk about the reservation line and uh, Harden, you know, receding. Um, people would say that the reservation line was here, now it's over up on the other side of LMBs. And people would say it was on this side. And the reason for a lot of people, for, for your information, that land receded because there was no um, lands and trusts in that area. And so there was a, uh, an act by the president at the time to you know, make that, take that away from reservation lands. And I don't know if all, many of you are aware of that, but that's what uh, that was a presidential proclamation where they took that portion away from the, the reservation. And if we don't stand our ground, it may happen in the future. That's why the purchase of Hairpin Ranches was important, not only for us today, but in the future, um, our, our, um, our land base. And people talk about our land base, and so I, I applaud all of you for making that effort to, to say that we want to make a stand together to purchase back tribal lands uh, lands that were let go during the allotment act, and with that, the 1.5 and the, the, the bid we got was 970, and the closing cost two, two point or two percent uh, in amount was uh, 989. And so, there's a remaining balance of like uh, 500,000, five, uh, about five, ten, five, eleven thousand. And I'd like to make a amendment to this uh, this bill, the 1.5. That's for the Hairpin Ranch. The the facility does need some improvement. Uh, there's uh, within this ranch, there's um, two A-frame homes that are lo located on a property. One is for family residents with a swimming pool. The other, located north of the family home, was turned into a bunkhouse for employees. Um, there is uh, there's also several holding pens for livestock and other animals. It also has an indoor arena with stalls for livestock. Uh, so, so it does need some improvement. So, if uh, the remaining 500,000 five, 500, plus it could be used for upgrades on the on the property. Um, and then the remaining, there's a remaining uh, to be used uh, to um, to be part of this operational plan. Uh, and commitment it has, I think, uh, spells out in uh, uh, the new version where including transaction costs and initial repairs or improvements to preserve the value or functionality of the acquired property. That's the amendment I want to. Proposed, and, and then that's on the 1.5 for the Hairpin Ranch, and then on the uh, the other 1.5 uh, line of credit, all of you have uh, the general fund drawdown revenue schedule. If you see from December all the way to June, there's no significant um, income coming into the tribe, and with that, we're having a uh, uh, Revenue, um, because a lot of our federal money is coming in the, in the um, end of the fiscal year. So right now is uh, from December all the way to June is always the uh, uh, you know we we do a lot of uh, things to just to keep the the payroll going, just to keep in the black. But right now we're. Um, the 1.5 would be a cushion until all the federal monies are, are 
come down in, uh, in the fall. And if you look at the schedule, this is the general fund. Uh, the drawdowns uh, don't come in until the end of the fiscal year as well. So that's why the 1.5 is important to, to sustain uh, the current budget and to keep cash on hand uh, because we do pay for a lot of the federal funds. And that's where the 1.5, uh, it's a cushion to you know, the line of credit to, to keep programs going. Uh, to the end of the year. Mr. Chair, I have a, I have a quick question for you, Lee. Um, so the, the payroll, what is your payroll, like with the uh, roads and whatnot, what will your payroll be starting in either April or May? Right now we're at 1.3 with all, with all programs across the board, and we're bringing on AML, and the roads, so uh, close to almost two million a month. Uh, and that'll be starting in April or May when the payroll will be going up? Um, it'll be starting this, this month. Okay. okay, we're still in 30 minute presentation. How much time do we have left, Sergeant Arms? We still have 19 minutes left. Is there anyone who wants wish to speak? Going once. Anyone wishing to speak? Remember, when you speak during the theorem presentation, it's a proponent. You speak as a proponent. Going twice. Final and last call. If not, okay, we move on. At this time, a speaker of the house will ask the chairman of the the, the revenue committee for any recommendations or for approval or disapproval. Due to the point that the chairman of the revenue committee is not here today, we will call upon the secretary of the revenue committee, which is Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. So at this time, the floor recognizes Senator Not Afraid, chairman of or secretary of the revenue committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. The, uh, let me, um, if with your permission, Mr. Speaker, the committee, of course, does have a recommendation, but I do have a brief synopsis and uh, a brief history on the efforts by both the executive and legislative branches of government and how the uh, recommendation came to be. It would only take me a couple minutes, Mr. Speaker, to elaborate and, and finally give the uh, recommendation on behalf of the committee. Right on ahead. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On March 14th and 15th, the Revenue Committee met with executive branch officials and both legal counsels were available for both branches at that time. And on March 14th and 15th, the recommendation hit the committee floor that a draft letter, a support letter be formulated to support the um, $3 million line of credit for the $1.5 million purchase of the Hairpin Ranch and also uh, the $1.5 for the operating cushion. The, the motion was made by Secretary uh, Old Crow, the speaker, made the second and Lucille called the question. And the vote was 11 0, 0 at that time for approval. Thus, a letter, I believe, was formulated uh, on behalf of the committee and the branch uh, supporting the efforts of uh, the executive branch officials at the time. And the tribe was successful in garnering the purchase of the ranch on March 26, thus uh, history was made at that time. And I believe that was made by a joint effort by both branches working in unison, unison to benefit the Crow Nation. Then on April 2nd, the committee met again. The committee talked about uh, everything from the, the, the the proposed $10 million loan down the road that will probably be uh, introduced through a special session in the near future. 
while the 120 days is pending for the $3 million line of credit. On April 2nd, the motion was made by Duke Goes Ahead, the chairman of the committee, to approve the $3 million line of credit. Also to have a subsection four for amendments discussed during the meeting and a directive for uh, legal counsel Bill Watt and also Legal J, AKA J Harris for the legislative branch to put together language for section four. The second was made by Speaker Shane and questioned by uh, Senator uh, Lucille other medicine. The vote was 800 uh, for approval of the $3 million line of credit. Um, I believe one of the um, the items that, that was discussed during committee and the chairman of the executive branch can correct me if I'm wrong. You know, $1.5 million cushion goodish was maintained during the late Chairman Van administration to continue the operation of the tribe. I believe that is the goal, one of the goals that is in mind today uh, for, for business to continue for the Crow people. Very important and as stated earlier, the Hairpin Ranch was purchased, a historic mark for the Crow Nation um, those things um, are an awesome achievement and accomplishment because both branches have come together in unison, in full cooperation for the Crow people, for, Crow, for, for, for our future as a Crow Nation. Therefore, on behalf of the committee, Mr. Speaker, the recommendation from the committee is to approve the three point million dollar unsecured line of credit. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, as you mentioned earlier, there are amendments during the amendment process, and there is a red line version ready to go, I believe. Uh, I think Legal J indicated that earlier, um, but the, the recommendation is for approval. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Secretary of the Revenue Committee, Senator Nonnerfrey. So now that brings us to the debate portion. The floor is now open for debate. I believe Chairman Okayot, the floor organizes Chairman Okayot of the Executive Branch. That's correct. On a 1.5, uh, it was always uh, in place as a cushion to uh, for the federal funds, uh, because a lot of the federal programs are reimbursed at the end of the year. So the 1.5 was always in place until 2009, um, and in 2010, uh, 11 and 12, then that 1.5 was uh, no longer there. So we wanted to establish that uh, question so that we don't, we don't go into the red. Right now, currently, um, the, the, the money in the bank, we are in the red, so it's, uh, you know, that's why it's uh, uh, from December, just like the OST programs, from December to June, there's no general fund revenues that come in until the end of the year. And so um, August, September, a lot of those uh, federal programs that we uh, put the bill for in, in, under the general fund are paid back to the general fund at the end of the year. So 1.5 is there to, so that we don't go into a default or, you know, have to pay a lot of uh, NSF charges. Uh, so that's why the 1.5 is needed to help us uh, more of a line for credit so that if we need to tap into that, then it'll be enough. But if we don't, it'll be uh, to uh, keep us from going to the red. Thank you, Chairman. We are still in debate. Second call for debate.
Okay, I guess we'll go to the third and final call for debate. With that, we move on. We go on to over the floor for recommendations or motions for amendments at this time. Okay, I guess uh, the Secretary of the House is requesting for a short recess to get our information for the amendments so that all senators can have the amendments in front of them as we go through them. So we will take a three minute recess.
come out of recess. We have 14 senators present. We're coming out of recess, and at this time, we're still, that brought us to the recommendation for motions and for amendments. So at this time, the floor recognizes Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. At this time, in accordance with the wishes of the Revenue Committee, I now make a motion to amend with all the changes as indicated in the agreed upon proposed substitute. I believe the proposed substitute was passed out during the three minute break or recess. If you have the blue line version in front of you, there is a couple of changes here. In bold print, it reads, resolution authorizing, on the first page there where the title is at, resolution authorizing the chairman of the executive branch to obtain a $3 million unsecured line of credit from First Interstate Bank to provide funds for tribal. And after tribal, we include the word operations in blue there. Now, as we move down to the third whereas, it reads in the original version, whereas in order to provide immediate funding for the foregoing land purchase and economic development opportunities, comma, and in the blue line version, this is added, and to provide additional operating funds for the tribal government. Please move to the next page to section four. It reads that the funds from the line of credit authorized by this resolution after payment of transactions costs for the loan shall be used only. Now after the word only, there is a strike. And the strike is indicated on the next page in the red line. What is being striked is for authorized tribal government expenditures pursuant to the FY 2013 tribal budget approved by the legislature as such budget may be amended from time to time. That is struck. Now this is added, and once again, this is included in the motion as agreed upon. It reads as follows, colon, subpart A, the amount of $1.5 million shall be authorized for the purpose of land acquisition for and on behalf of the Crow tribe and directly associated costs, including transaction costs and initial repairs or improvements to preserve the value or functionality of the acquired properties. That particular section is in parentheses. Let me read it again. Including transaction costs and initial repairs or improvements to preserve the value or functionality of the acquired properties, period. Accordingly, the FY 2013 tribal budget shall be amended as follows. The budget account department titled, in quotes, tribal land purchase program, end quote. In parentheses, budget line item code 64130, once again, that is in parentheses shall be increased by $1.5 million to a total amount of $2.1 million. Am I correct on that? Yes, I am. Now, the next part, Section B. Any other funds drawn from the line of credit shall be for authorized tribal government expenditures pursuant to the FY 2013 tribal budget as approved and amended by the legislature, and as such budget may be amended from time to time, period. Accordingly, comma, the FY 2013 tribal budget shall be amended as follows, colon, there shall be $3 million added to the anticipated 
tribal revenues and identified in the budget as, in quotes, First Interstate Bank line of credit, end quote, period. Mr. Speaker, I so move. And my comment there earlier, just a side note, if the Big Lodge children would like to buy that, I'm kind of running low on funds. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, gosh, you like <laughs> Thank you, Senator Nottafray, the Lodge Grass District. So now we have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Nottafray of the Big Horn District. Do we have a question? Question by Senator Huggs of the prior district. So all those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Oh wait, we're gonna have a. <laughs> Before we go any further, does anyone want still want to buy that right? <laughs> Not okay. All right, now we'll go for a vote. <coughs> we'll go for a vote on the amended on the amendments and substitutes with a substitute version. We have a motion by Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District, second by Senator Not Afraid of the Big Horn District. Question by Senator Huds of the Prior District. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. With amendments. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Motion for amendments carries with a vote of 14 yes, zero no. Zero abstain. That brings us to the second reading. Floor recognizes Senator Not Afraid of the Lodgegrass District. At this time, Mr. Speaker, I move that we waive second reading with amendments and move for final approval. We have a motion, a second by Senator Covers Up. Question. Question by Senator Stewart. All those in favor of waiving the second reading with amendments and substitute version, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining, with a vote of 14 yes, zero no, zero abstaining, motion carries to waive second reading with amendments and substitute version. So at this time, we will move on to final roll call vote. <coughs> Starting with Senator <coughs> Tulek and Black Lodge, yes. Green Page, Black Lodge, yes. Stewart, Black Lodge, yes. Other medicine, no, yes. Kyle Ranch Reno, yes. Not afraid, Oshpaji Chat, yes. Sorry, Blood, yes. Not afraid, Bitcoin, yes. Deep Green, Arrow Creek, yes. Arrow Creek, yes. Wilbur, Mighty Few, yes. Stuart, Mighty Few, yes. Old Crew, yes. Shane Reno, yes. Bring us to a total of. Secretary of the House states 14 for yes, zero no, zero abstain. <coughs> this time, resolution passes with a vote of 14 yes, zero no, zero abstain. Time the floor recognizes 
the executive branch. Anyone want to approach the floor from the executive branch? Floor organizes Vice Secretary Backbone. Transparency, like what to look by well, if this is good working relationship, it, you know, uh, uh, people see the results of working together. Like, uh, um, CJ, it's going to change, you know, it's uh, 1933 acres of that, that in um, colored by the uh, key, they go get to the, to the reservation. I got to do it's a uh, no, key to. Economic prosperity and like I know, Maoish Kasu, solid guy. And uh, 30th, like I uh, starting this Friday, we're going to start to close the documents on this on this property with the title agency. And uh, what do you want the title to be? The Crow Tribe. And uh, just the other day, um, Language summit. We were at the language summit, and uh, one of the uh, MCs over there got up and said, "Since 1851, Crow tribe has lost every every time they came in uh, to sit down to the table. They've lost land since 1851." And again, historic to look at it. 1851, we've been losing land all this time until um, March 20, what was that, 26? We uh, added 1,900 acres, and it was uh, because of uh, this good working relationship. 1,900 acres, and people will, will say it's celebration at that. I think it's uh, on the 30th, we want to have a a get together out there. All of you, the Lord, Joe follows it. Some of them want to ride horses and you know, Maui Kimad, the Koaba, because since 1851, Maui Kimad, we live about land. And I got a now we just hope it. It's a way new guy to go. Some of you, I would cut the Maluk Shak Kuji, Nagi Akbir Kukuna, his wish. Mm-hmm. 
May 7th, 140 some odd years since signing of that treaty. And it did, uh, to prosper. May 7th, the Kobe, Chihuahua, Kimatu, designate Treaty Day, de la September 17th, the Kopo. Hey, Balago, Treaty Grail, Che, Cho, Cho, De La Sala, the Gone Cho, Cho. Na, Nilo, Niwala, Kohesa, Kobe, Pinto Pawa, Big Shir, Sala, the Home Oga, the Tear, Na, the Touch Cash, and you, the Gunner, you start, Pinal. Agenda for new business, it's tolling on the agenda, but we want to bring up the joint action resolution, the Crow Tribal Joint Action Resolution to establish Crow Tribal policy officially supporting the state of Israel on a nation to nation basis. Before we'll organize Senator Stewart of the Black Lodge District. If it's proper, I'd like to make that motion to adjust the agenda for that, to bring that. Piece of legislation forward. Mr. Secretary, is that, is that able, able to be done? Okay, at this time, I'll make that in a formal motion to bring the support of Israel Joint Action Resolution to the floor. Can we have a motion on the floor? Do we have a second? Second by Senator Huggs. Question. Question by Senator Not Afraid of the Lodgegrass District. All those in favor of the motion for to amend the agenda, raise your right hand. Point of order. I believe we only have 12 senators. Oh, we have 13 again. <laughs> <laughs> and one step out. So all those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Senator D. Crane, you can hear me in the back room if you're for or against the motion. item on the agenda will be the joint action resolution, a Crow Tribal joint action resolution to establish Crow Tribal policy officially supporting the state of Israel on a nation to nation business. At this time, the floor is going to recognize chairman of the executive branch who do you appoint to recognize the, to represent the executive branch on this joint action resolution. Okay, the floor recognizes 
the Wayne Bull Chief, as representative of the executive branch, to read this into record. Appointed by the chairman of the, of the executive branch. Thank you, Speaker of the House, Senators, uh, Executive Home. Oh, um, Jar number 13, introduced by Darren O'Kyle, Crow Executive Branch, a joint resolution action. A Crow Tribal Joint Action Resolution to establish Crow Tribal policy officiating, official support, supporting the state of Israel on a nation to nation basis. Okay, stop right there. Motion. Motion to adopt by Senator Stewart, second by Senator Huggins. Go ahead and proceed. Whereas, pursuant to Article 5, Section 2 of the Crow Tribal Constitution, the Crow Tribal Legislature, here and after legislature, is vested with the power and duty to promulgate and adopt laws, resolutions, ordinance, codes, regulations, and guidelines in accordance with the Crow Tribal Constitution, federal laws for the governance of the Crow Tribal Crow Tribe of Indians, and whereas pursuant to Article 4, Section 4 of the Crow Tribal Constitution, the general duties of the officials of the Crow Tribal Executive Branch here and after Executive Branch includes the duty to implement all laws, resolutions, codes, policies duly adopted by the legislature, and whereas the Crow Tribe of Indians known as the Absalogi Nation is a federal recognized sovereign tribe, tribal nation without its inheriting rights, privileges, powers, which has entered into treaties on a nation-to-nation -nation basis with the United States in 1825, 1851, and 1868. And whereas the Crow tribe throughout record history of the Crow tribe has resided in a beautiful, sacred homeland known as Crow Country, which was highly sought after by neighboring tribes who at times engaged in combat with the tribe, including an attempt to eradicate the Crow tribe from its very existence. Whereas the modern Crow Indian Reservation and its land, water, minerals, wealth today remains highly sought after by non-tribal members, and whereas the state of Israel has faced similar historical challenges as the Crow tribe to its territories, integrity, survival, and many which is still going on today. And whereas during the July 2007 to 27, 2007 quarterly legislative session, the legislature passed a joint as action resolution JAR 07-07 titled as a resolution to urge support of the United Nations Declarations of the Rights of the Indigenous People, which was signed into law by the late Tribal Chair Chairman Carl Vine of July 18, 2007 and whereas the State of Israel voted in support of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of the Indigenous People in the 61st session of the UN General Assembly held in New York City on September 13, 2007. Shall we that part which is inserted in the language? Uh, just uh, whereas and then yeah, just read that and then continue on, and then we'll come back to this at an amendment time. Whereas, insert additional language on legislative committee review and discussion here. Whereas, the Crow Tribe government now seeks to establish a policy in which the Crow Tribe declares its official support of the state of Israel. Now, therefore, be it hereby resolved by the executive branch and the legislators in regular session, section one, Crow Tribal Policy. The official policy of the Crow Tribe of Indians shall be to support the State of Israel, especially in its effort to maintain economic, territory, political integrity, and the promotions of peace and political stability in the Middle East. The policy shall be on a nation-to-nation -nation basis. Section 2. Notice of Policy to State of Israel, United States Department of State, United Nations. The Tribal Secretary shall take care that a certified copy of this joint action resolution along with any such statements or proclamations in support as made by, uh, may be made by the Tribal Chairman be provided to the Israel Ambassador to the United States. The United States Ambassador to the State of Israel, an appropriate committee or organization of the United Nations for purpose of notice and recordings. Section 3, 
monument to policy. The Crow Tribal Executive Branch shall take care to ensure that an official flag of the State of Israel is flown at Veterans Park and Crow Agency as a monument to the official policy of the Crow Tribe as provided in Joint Action Resolution. Section 4, effective date, this Joint Action Resolution shall take effect immediately upon being duly adopt, adopted by the Crow Tribal Legislator and signed into law by the Tribal Chairman. Thank you. This brings us to the 30 minute presentation. I believe uh, that the chairman appoints you to, you can still speak on behalf of this resolution as a proponent. A uh whole, -huh. thank you, chairman. And now, uh, Speaker of the House, Ashti uh, Malam. Right now, um, a lot of you, some of you don't understand why the Crow, uh, the chairman, and uh, some of the Legislative uh, branches, the senators have um, have put this on the floor of the state. Um, it's for several reasons. Several, um, we as not only a culture people that, but also we have to understand we are a Christian people now, and that not only do we observe our culture and language, but also we observe now our Christian inheritance now, and as part of our Christian heritage that we believe in the Bible as absolute word from God. In this Bible, uh, it states that any nation that blesses Israel shall be blessed. Any nation that stands with Israel, God will also protect that nation also. Any ally to, to, to Israel becomes an ally to God. And so this is, number one, it is a spiritual, um, our chairman earlier said that, that our treaties are holy, and they're strong, they're very powerful. And I believe that. And what we're doing is that we are establishing a covenant or a treaty with Israel. And with this treaty, with this treaty with Israel, what we're asking is that, is that God, you protect Israel and all these, and that you bless Israel. And because we are a treaty nation with Israel, with a nation to nation, uh, nation to nation treaty with Israel, that God, that we ask that you would bless us also, and that you would also uh, protect us from our enemies. Also, as part of our culture, we have 31 tribal, we have 31 tribal uh, customs that are in aligned with Israel. I believe that uh, it's not by accident. I, as I'm as I'm growing into this and into uh, what God is doing, I believe that nothing is by accident. Nothing's by accident. Look at it. And so I believe that we are also like an Israel, like a, a, an Israel here. As throughout the years, you saw that our enemies, tribal enemies, they're trying to annihilate us. And uh, that we believe that there's a creator, a Baha'i machine, protected us. And so, you know, um, I and so with this, with this resolution, this treaty being enacted, I believe that God is going to bless us of Solomon people. Chuck Pierce, the prophet Chuck Pierce, came and prophesied over the Crow Nation 2007. Two things he said, or three things he told, he said about the Crow Nation. Number one, there is going to be a revival of healing, miracles, Kadesh. And I believe that, that I believe that by passing that resolution that Jesus is Lord of the Crow Nation, that that was key in bringing in that revival. Awokaoma. There is going to be a revival of healing here. Now I'm talking about the spirituality. We have Solomon. We believe in the spirituality strong. He may um, he may can't uh, um, can't how. Said that one of the good. Uh, he said one of the things about the Crow tribe that I see is that you guys hold on to your 
spiritual beliefs, and that's very strong. Right? But also the second thing, uh, the prophet Chuck Pierce uh, declared and prophesied over the Apsalagi peoples that wealth is coming. Right? Wealth. Bharatiya is going to open doors for wealth. Right? And that Allah Ta'ala, the Jewish people, the Israel, the Hissu, they're wealthy. I believe that by making this treaty with this, with this nation, I believe that that is going to bring the second part of that prophecy is going to come to pass. That I believe that it's going to open up the doors of wealth unto the Absalomian nation. And we love it. The third thing Chuck Pierce said was that Crow tribe, you're going to be a prototype. That means that other nations are going to follow your example. Other tribes, not just tribes, nations. And that it's going to prophesy that up. Absaloga, your name, your emblem, the emblem of the Crow tribe. He said that it's going to be the Awayaga, it's going to a globally. Globally, people are gonna know and, and know and and when they see the Crow tribal emblem, they're gonna recognize and know who the Crow tribe is. So this is a very very powerful thing that we're about to pass, and I urge you, senators, pass this resolution. The hand of God. Is going to be on the Crow Nation. I hope. Thank you. We are still in a 30 minute presentation. Do we have any more proponents? Board organizer Senator Huggs. <coughs> All right, yay. Uh, thanks, Speaker. Hey, um, Texas is funny. Um, last week, and they come out here. Um, church, they're children. Look, um, Dama and Bog Kovacham. Um, Bog is only good. Okay, what not? Um, state, she's your hand. So we yeah, have uh, pastors and she was the Dhamma Sagan, Bajra, the Leo Elisho Lalu Gol Baish, that when you pass this, the Kapit to um, the Zalit Church, it's, it's beyond, but once we can establish a Pahu, we can, the Zalit Church can Ila, Ila, and Ila Glawi. Prophecy after prophecy, we can be cool. My charges can be cool out here. And Baguaja, and most Bagish look, you have to know, it's a good first nation leader here, first nation's people to, to do this. And she was um, the crows, we spearhead a lot of things, but right? we're, we're the first. And like it, you want to say, boy, oh, we're the first one. Like, uh, Bakwa, first one to act that this region. I may go to show you a Like a first land purchase, good wallet. And everything's lining up. Like the way in the chairs, you can wear a little chest full straw. And I think it's crucial, whatever you know, I mean, to pass it. So. Richard um, um gives glue, be good for all of you. 18 senators and four officials gives glue. Um, Yala could do them. Uh, next week, a lot of like you all know, we can agenda change up all of them. But uh, Jack shared um, all way for his gift. So, I hope. Thank you. We are still in the 30 minute presentation, so any more proponents? We have any more proponents? 30 minute presentation. I'd just like to add to uh, Senator Hubs' comments is that uh, 
over the Easter weekend, Senator Hudge was in, when he was in Texas, he read the like, the LR, and then he read this joint action resolution, and it was on uh, it was seen all throughout the United States and all over the world, which has kind of opened the door for the for our big nation as we are being recognized now as a, one of the, the leaders of the world, and I believe that. Uh, means that we are recognizing another nation by doing this we are coming, coming above the United States of America and showing them that they have a treaty with us and we are recognizing this other nation the nation of Israel and we are recertifying our treaty in the language of this joint action resolution we are reminding the United States of America that they have a treaty with the Crow nation that they have to honor and we are also going to be, we're going to be recognized for this in the United Nations. We will see this in the future because as we are spearheading this, then now we are the leader of the Indian country once again. So I'd just like to add that to Senator Hudson's comments. Do we have any more, uh, we are still a 30 minute presentation yet. Any more comments? Going once, going twice, going three times. Okay, we will go on to item number five. Speaker of the House will ask the chairman. This was placed into the treaty committee, so at this time I will ask for for disapproval or approval from the chairman of the treaty committee, which is Senator Covers up of the Lodgegrass District. Okay, uh, oh, hey, uh, April 3rd, today's uh, meeting it was uh, at 1.19 p.m. and uh, there were some visitors like Dwayne, uh, Kirby Bromley, Susan, uh, and uh, I need to give to the shooter the it to the proponent could I do him. He could have the he will I have him. And that, uh, Committee get uh, to approve bring to the floor on April session. Kenny should uh motion could he take him, lucky second could he Duke skip question could take him. Look uh a lot of will to cut with you but you could put it that. And uh the ninth four as he uh, insert additional language upon legislative committee review. Discussion here. He, uh, it uh big I go with question, but by asking, I don't know uh, uh, what there's going to be an insertive here, or then go. Uh, that's my question right now. But the committee did want to pass this, and uh, they voted on it six yes, zero no, zero abstain. He got to do he six could have been. That was uh, what uh, we talked about, and there's a lot of discussion on that. And then, uh, Bible would have a quote for that, and then you could have said it. Then she got a lead with him, and then proponents could have looked for what. And you could have said that, you could have a lead with him. Look at that. It's ready, hit that. And my question is, they're going to put another language on there? That's my question to the sponsor. I believe uh, I had spoken with our in-house counsel while we were in recess, and he was going to get the language, and he was going to speak with Pastor Bull Chief and Senator Stewart to see what they were going to insert at, in that whereas, and it was going to be come on the floor through Senator Stewart at the amendments portion. Okay, we kind of ready to get out yet? <clears throat> yeah, if I if I yes, for organized Senator Stewart. In that piece there, it. On the eighth, whereas it says the state of Israel voted to support the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples in the 61st session of the UN General Assembly held in New York City on September 13th, 2007. And whereas, and this is the insert additional language that I want to present in our amendment, if I may. Genesis 12, 2 and 3. That's Genesis chapter 12, verse 2 and 3. And what it reads, it reads, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, 
and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Then moving on, whereas the Crow tribal government now seeks to establish tribal policy in which the Crow tribe declares its official support of the state of Israel. Okay, we need a copy of that to uh, get it kind of complete. So we need to have a copy of that to uh, make the amendment. But if I did. So we need to have copies of that uh, statement they made on that or as. I believe uh, when we come to the we will move on to debate. After we get done with debate, then we'll come up with that during the amendment, amendments portion. So at this time, if you just want to go forward with your approval or disapproval, then we'll go to debate. And then after debate, when the amendments come up, then I'll have them get that ready in the meantime for amendments. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, this is ready to come on the floor. Uh, just need the final uh, statement on that, whereas. So. Okay. The committee wanted to approve this, so it's six, six zero zero. Okay. Put it on four and approve. Approve. So we have approval from the chairman of the treaty committee with a vote of six zero zero in committee. That takes us to the debate portion. Is the the floor is now open for debate? Is there anyone, anyone wanting to debate? Going once. We're going to debate. We're going twice. Speaker. Four organizes Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Guys District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, members of the body. I know if uh, Senator Goes Ahead were here, he would be very passionate about this issue. It is a indeed a, I believe, a landmark piece of legislation in accordance with the spiritual values of not only our traditional and our, our cultural beliefs, but that a large percentage of our tribal members believe in the Christian way of life, the value system, the history of Israel, the history of the Hebrew people, Maya Kaddish. Uh, the scripture that was read earlier by Senator Stewart is very significant. Uh, I will bless those that bless you. Israel supported the indigenous rights of native peoples around the world at the United Nations. Now it is our turn to return the favor. If we unite with other nations that are spiritual in their belief systems, uh, in the spirit of recovery and healing, if we move forward spiritually, big I have the personal belief that on behalf of the Crow Nation, addiction will be broken, alcoholism will be broken, poverty will be broken. recovery and healing. Chuck Pierce or I, I read his uh, prophecy, Yiddish. I, I had one time I had an opportunity to read it at the Black Lodge Church, just right down the road here. And Bach uh, those the words from that prophecy. And not only Chuck Pierce, but then uh, uh, the great preachers like R. W. Shambach in the 1980s. Uh, school in the old school building. Uh, prophecy you will you will become you will no longer borrow but you will lend. I think we, we stand at the doorstep 
of, of um, spiritual breakthrough. And uh, uh, it's an important step on behalf of the Crow Nation. Uh, with that said, I know that uh, if some of you have, have read on Facebook the, the misunderstanding of our support of Israel and its history and our spiritual beliefs of the Crow Nation, there are s small groups of radicals on this reservation who don't understand the magnitude of what's happening. And there are groups that are saying, wow, it's anti-Crow or it's, uh, it's against this way or that way. Or, I, 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 Mr. Speaker, with due respect to the belief systems of the Crow people, I, it's not anti-anything. It's not anti um, uh, this or that. Big, I believe that the, the spiritual parallels that are involved complement one another. No, a large percentage of the Crow people uh, 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 believe um, in, 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 in different ways, Mr. Speaker, and uh, you can name them in the Crow language or you can name them in English. Uh, everything from Makbadashad or Bawagushbay, uh, Pentecostals, Baptists, Catholics, so on and so forth. I mean, if you look at our family structures, a large majority of our people believe, and I believe that they're in support of us supporting Israel and those spiritual beliefs. I mean, there's nothing wrong with joining with different belief systems to empower healing, to empower restoration of our Crow Nation, to, to move toward the future. And I'd like to thank the, the framers of this piece of legislation. It's introduced by Chairman Old Kyle on behalf of the executive branch in Diwa Chileoma Psalogish, Dilu Sishahoma. Thank you. So we are still in the debate. We're on second call. Any more debate? Going on third call. Last and final call for debate. All right. That brings us to the amendments portion. We will take a three minute recess here while we get the amendments ready for everyone. So a three minute recess.
Can everyone get a copy of the amended version? Do we have 13 senators here in the chambers? We are now at the amendments portion. Does everyone have a copy? And at this time, I will the floor organize Senator Stewart. Hello, Mr. These, Speaker. These amendments into record, and this will be in a form of your motion for the ninth. <coughs> whereas, did you just want me to read the whereas? Yes. Okay, it's on the ninth. Whereas. According to the King James Version of the Holy Bible, Book of Genesis, chapter 12, verses, tw verses 2 and 3, the words of the Creator at Barakia to the nation of Israel provide that I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Mr. Speaker. All right, so that's the... Motion for the amendment to the ninth whereas. Do we have a second? Second by Senator Huggs. Question. Question by Senator Not Afraid of the Lodge Grass District. All those in favor of this motion for the language for the ninth whereas. Raise your right hand. Abstaining. Motion carries with a vote of 13 yes, zero no, zero abstain for the amendment to the ninth whereas for the language for the ninth whereas. This takes us to the second reading. The floor recognizes Senator Not Afraid of the Lodgegrass District. Thank you, Mr. Speaker members of the body, I move that we waive second reading with the amendments and move to final roll call vote. Second. We have a motion on the floor by Senator Not Afraid to waive second reading with the amendments to move on to a final roll call vote. Second by Senator Stewart. Question by Senator Huggs. All those in favor of waiving second reading with amendments to move and move on to final roll call vote, raise your right hand. All those opposed? All those abstaining? Motion carries with a vote of 13 yes, zero no, zero abstain to waive second reading with amendments and language for the ninth whereas. At this time, we will start with the with Senator Pretty Paint of the Black Lodge District for a final roll call vote. Pretty Paint, Black Lodge, yes. Stewart, yes. Reno, yes. Carlos, yes, Reno. Not afraid, Oshpa J. Chen, yes. Don't we have a lot of grass, yes. Not afraid, Bighorn, yes. Deep Green, yes. Uh, Zero Creek, yes. Wilbur, Valley Field, yes. Stuart, mighty feet, yes. Old crew, yes. Shane Reno, yes. Report from the Secretary of the House, 13 yes, zero no, zero abstain. Joint action resolution carries with a vote of 13 yes, zero no, zero abstain. Floor recognizes executive branch this time, so <coughs> organizes Chairman O'Kyle. <coughs> oh, thank you for uh, that 
to an excellent resolution there and, uh, to establish co travel policy officially supporting the state of Israel on a nation to nation basis. But again, uh, <coughs> there's a um, in a section monument to policy. But again, I think we've uh, <coughs> the, it's in the process of putting a sign uh, back at Veterans Park. Um, Jesus is Lord on a crew reservation. That was set sign in college. Um, the Veterans Park. Okay, did I get a cool sign? Did I go? Um, I wanted to make with a plaque. Um, and, uh, the the word ass. Uh, Bible there, the quote to the black cream, you know, flag cream goes all the way there by the sign that's uh, going to be put up by um, the Crow people. We got donations to the um, sign. You know, this year was, uh, that was uh, pastors today who not school. So that's part of this uh, advisory. You know, as you go. Uh, pastors that advisory, advisory board of new and that's where it is now the language get a lot of logical and uh, a whole much that's um yeah again my wish to say though when I do get up hey I'm a mule look they that and I'm to go uh my life be to go so who can go now page you go to my whole mind thank you At this time, we will, uh, I spoke with uh, Pastor Bolton. I told him before we recess for the day that he wanted to uh, pray pray with us for doing this and, and uh, giving you thanks, I guess, is what it's going to be. So at this time, before I recognize <coughs> Mr. Bolton, who will pray, and then after that, we'll recess until tomorrow at 10 o'clock. We'll reconvene tomorrow at 10 o'clock. Thank you, uh, Speaker of the House. Uh, let's all clap our hands at Chimacha Chimacha. Turning point to Noah Besh, turning point. Uh, it's, again, nothing's done by accident. Noah Besh, it's a Noah Besh, I've got Holocaust victims and I recognize it. So, who knew that? Holocaust victims, and I know I'm recognized. You know, this a Bahamish, a Bahamish, you pass this resolution on the same day that Holocaust victims, and I know I'm nationally, worldwide recognized. Most of you probably didn't know that. Him, you know, I wish what they watch, what they watch, you know, go, can you want to go to the camp? Come back. I'ma declare a blessing upon the Crow Nation. Father Father God, no abish chimakaj my home. No abish father, no abish Allah God, be recognized it. Resolution Krama Kakba Kagekun is Chuana Kashish Jesus Christ. He is Lord of the Crow Nation. No abish, we declare that one more time that as we stand before here, your leaders, we declare Jesus Christ as Lord of the Crow Nation. No Abesh Tishmirach Bage Israel, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 and 3 8. And I will bless those that bless you. No Abesh, I declare the same blessing upon you, Crow Nation. I declare this blessing upon the men, upon the women, upon the children, upon your lands, upon your homes. I declare the blessing of Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2 and 3, that in the nation of the Absalom nation, I declare what the Lord will say, I will make thee a great nation. I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. 
And I will bless those that bless you and curse them that curse thee. And, that all, and through thee, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And this is what I declare over you, that you are a blessed nation, that a father dear will bless you and you will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. No all this, we release that healing, that let the land be healed. Let the homes be healed. Let the families be healed. Let our children be healed. Let us be I declare that we are now healed from our past and no longer will the past will hold us back but today we go forward into health and to healing and restoration. Today I declare right now that we are a blessed nation and now we release the, the windows of heaven. Wealth be released upon the Absalogan nation and let your name will be known globally. We'll do this. He will do this and we declare this blessing upon you for what you have done this day in Jesus name Amen and Amen Amen Alright so we'll be in recess until tomorrow we will reconvene at 10 o'clock tomorrow so everybody have a safe trip home I got an announcement 9 o'clock natural resources committee meeting concerning the blue water lease so I ask that the committee be there at 9 in the morning here in the chambers so 9 o'clock tomorrow? 9 tomorrow, we're going to go over the, the proposed um, substitute. Okay. So Natural Resources Committee tomorrow at 9. And then Thursday, we're looking at uh, recessing for that day for the signing of the... That's uh, one. For the signing of the Westmoreland Track 1 lease. Uh, we have, we'll have a 9 o'clock here, and then a 10 o'clock also here. After we get done with that, then we'll go to Wonkai at 11 o'clock for the signing. Senator Jr. The 9 o'clock on Wednesday for Veterans Committee for the Vet Bill. So the